All right, so essentially in this video, I wanna go over sales assets, what they are, how to use them, how to actually effectively implement them in your business and kind of how they work. So let's jump right into this document. And I'm also gonna give you a free resource at the end of this that is included in your package. But basically sales assets are used to bridge the gap between your prospects current state and their desired state. When positioned correctly, prospects should see your sales assets as a new opportunity, which inevitably knock down all their common objections. So a sales asset is a basically video that's used to knock down objections before people get on the call. So people will watch this video, they'll either book in a call or if they've already booked in a call, they might watch your video in your follow-up sequence after a call pre-call follow-up sequence and they'll be able to be warmed up enough to know about your service know what you offer and they can also disqualify the people who aren't actually going to be interested so there's basically there's two things that we really want to consider here when crafting sales assets we want to look at what's their current state and then what's their desired state so it's your job as the founder to create a path for your prospect to go from where they're at now to where they desire and to find their desired state, especially if you're offering a service and especially if you're offering a B2B service. You want people to go from where they're at now, they're not making enough money, they want to make more money, and then they are making more money, their desired outcome. So if you're, let's just say a fitness coach right now, the current state might be that somebody's fat, they're unhealthy, they know that they're unhealthy, but they don't know what to do about it. And then their desired state is obviously they're fit, they're in good physical shape and that kind of stuff. So as the business owner or coach or whoever you are, it is your job to help them get to their desired state. So unfortunately, your prospects don't really care about the mechanism that you use to get them from point A to B. They just care that it works. What they care about is avoiding pain, the bad things that happen, avoiding that pain, and they care about seeking pleasure. So that's the two things that your prospects care about. And that's why they're highlighted here. So these are very, very important things here, avoiding pain and seeking pleasure. Those those are the two kind of emotional things that we want to drive off of. And remember, your prospects buy off of emotion, not off of logic necessarily. So you really want to make sure that you're targeting their emotional state and targeting their desired state emotionally. If you can present them with a new opportunity that they haven't seen before, that the market hasn't shown them before, that's going to allow them to go from their current state to their desired state, it's going to be easy for your buyer to buy. So we want to make it as frictionless as possible so that your buyer will just jump right into it, right? So we must know the emotional impacts of both states, the one that they're currently in and their desired state. So their current state, what's the emotional impacts? Are they anxious? Are they depressed? What are those things that we're trying to trigger? Are they fat? Are they broke? What are those kind of emotional triggers that they are feeling right now that we can target? And then what are the things that they desire? They desire to have a lot of money. They desire to be in good physical health that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what we want to do when we're crafting our sales assets is really focus in on where they at now and where are they going. Another example here, prospect has inconsistent lead flow. Obviously it's a surface level problem, but we're looking for the emotional impact. So we're not going to say inconsistent lead flow. We're going to say, you know, because of this inconsistent lead flow, they feel anxiety, which is the emotional impact. The logical impact is that they have inconsistent lead flow, but the emotional impact is the anxiety that comes with it. So knowing that emotional impact is really going to help you to be able to sell and it's going to be a really key player in being relatable and building rapport within your sales assets. So here's an exercise that I want you to do. This is going to be the video that I'm talking about here. An example for one of the coaching offers. Here's their current state. So uncertainty, anxiety, or filling a void. These are kind of the current state. And then this is the desired state. So in this case, the current state, let's just take lack of significance. They feel like they're not a thought leader or making an impact because of their lack of purpose. What they want is significance. So feeling fulfilled from making their family and friends proud, right? Helping make an impact on others. So if we can look at what's their current state and what's their desired state, then we can look at what goes in the middle, what bridges the gap between the two, right? What is actually gonna help them get to that new state where they are more happy and able to fulfill these things that are their desires. So now that you understand where your prospects are currently at, the surface and emotional states, it's your job to create the sales assets to identify the two states. So both the current state and the desired state. This is kind of the format that I always use the intro, who is this for, what do you need, especially this is where the branding comes in play, who are you, who are your people, what do they need, what do you deliver, why are you special or different or the one, clarify that stuff right in the intro so that you can filter out the people who don't want to watch it and you can keep the people who do want to watch it really glued to their screen the whole way. 
Then we're going to want to state the problems and overview problem. You're going to state what are their problems? What's their current state? That's where that's going to come in. And then you're going to look at what's your promise? What are you going to deliver? What mechanism are you going to use? Not necessarily talking directly about the mechanism, but talking about how that mechanism is going to take them from point A to point B and what they can do about their problems. The next thing is you want to give an overview of your opportunity and what it will do for them. So whatever your kind of opportunity is, and then a quick backstory that supports your new opportunity. So for me, if I'm talking about a growth partner, offer, I might say, hey, I was doing content for my business. I did content for a while. Content didn't really work. It worked, but it didn't give me a monetary result. So instead, I transitioned into a growth partner business, which helps me make money and get my clients a result. And that could be a quick backstory, right? Then you want to do a quick case study. If you have multiple, like if you're a fitness coach and you have like five transformations, pop them all up, right? Make people think that it's very easy or not necessarily easy, but that it's achievable because that's how you're going to get people to buy. They're going to look at that case study and see, hey, you've done it for these people, they can do it for me. So that's going to be kind of your case study. And then you're going to break down your three key pillars. You got to break down the false beliefs that are in these three pillars. So if somebody thinks that drop shipping doesn't work because they've tried it in the past and they spent a bunch of money on ads, you got to come up with your unique opportunity there. So this framework is going to easily book you three to five meetings per day alone if you're able to get the eyes on the sales assets. So essentially, this is going to be like your highest ROI as a founder. So you're going to want to have as much insights and market state because it's going to make you a thought leader in your industry. So especially if you're doing like fitness coaching for a certain audience, or if you're doing accounting for campgrounds, for instance, like if you're going to do it that way, you're going to become a thought leader in the industry. So that's kind of why that's super important, that niche, that super niche down and make sure that these are something where your titles are very important. But yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. Like this video here is just a quick little video that I'm recording. It's can be a loom, whatever. And you're going to want to make these sales assets interactive. So you want your prospects to follow along. Like in this video here, I told you to write down the current state and the desired state of your audience. And that's kind of how I told you what to do. That's kind of the exercise. So but yeah, every week you should be developing sales assets. Sales assets can be long form content, short form content, writing, like even this document here that you're looking at above me is writing and it is a sales asset. So it can be used as such. So every week you should be developing these sales assets, your goal should be to get as many eyes on them as possible. Because really, when you have as many eyes on them as possible, you're able to get more leads to your business. And that's kind of the goal. So the purpose of a sales asset, it's kind of a fancy term, it's really just a video or a piece of content that you can use to sell your products. And it's going to be a huge when we get into setters and closers, because it's just going to be like ammunition. That's why it's going to be really important for sales assets that you actually go through and use those sales assets to your advantage, because your setters and closers are going to need them when they go to close your deals. So that's kind of my video here on sales assets. I'm also going to attach a resource in here on a sales asset tracker. So if you work in Notion, you will see there is a default tracker that comes with it in the templates page. And I'm just going to pull this up real quick. There you go. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's very simple. It's a template that Notion built. So it's pre-built template. We use a little bit different template for people who are clients, but this will be attached as well. But you can see you have your title here and then you have a file. So I wouldn't necessarily do a logo because that's not really a sales asset. But if you have like a document, like in this case, it's a downloadable file, you can attach that there. You can also attach like a URL that's a blog post. So you know how something can do something. In my case, like um, if I was going to use this, I could use it like this. So this is a video I did a while back called three ways to acquire customers fast and easy. Uh, and then I just attach a YouTube link. And so when my setters and closers go in here, they can easily see this is a video. Uh, and you can also select the asset type. So this is going to be uh, kind of, you know, what the asset is. And these are all the examples of sales assets, your status, you know, you're going to be in use, whatever. Uh, and then you can see where you're going to use it. So in this case, sales, or who you're going to use it on, I mean, uh, and then you can use last updated, obviously, all these fields here. Uh, but you can also look at it by status. So if something needs an update, you can move it there. And if you move it here, here, it'll move it back over here. So if you know how to use Notion, this is pretty simple. But these are kind of how sales assets work. It's free little sales asset tracker as well that I've included down below. And yeah, if you want to really take your business to the next level with sales assets, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to you and hop on a call. You can email me at zach at dozerdogdesigns.com and I'll respond to you. So hit me up. You can go to dozerdogdesigns.com and get more information there as well. But this is kind of how sales assets work.